Okay, Descript can be extended to become a chemistry notation system. Now, this notation system is nowhere near as detailed or accurate as our current systems. What this system endeavors to do is to create single symbols for the molecules, as opposed to giving all of the detail in stereochemistry. We're going to eliminate stereochemistry. We'll eliminate a lot of the bonds, and we're going to just drop all the hydrogens, so that we can actually look at larger molecules and start to understand the atomic composition and structure. Now, we're not going to understand the 3D structure, but we'll at least understand which where the where the atoms connect to each other. So we'll start off with our C, that's our key component. The Descript C looks like so, but we'll allow it to rotate into any sh any direction. Now this will eliminate some other letters from Descript. This is the Descript D and this is the Descript H. In the chemistry form, we're going to drop these completely and we'll allow the C to rotate into any direction. Now once you've got a C, it can connect to anything you like here, here, or here. And if you need four bonds, we'll just extend it. This is the Descript L. We'll drop that letter from the alphabet as well and we'll allow four connection points. We've got a carbon that's got four connection points, which is perfect. The next thing we have is a nitrogen. Now the nitrogen, we'll use the N, which is a loop. Now normally this would be an M, but we'll eliminate the M and allow the N to loop, the, the N to go in any direction. Uh, as, as you see, you've got one, two connection points, and we'll add our third here. So if you need a third connection point, you just connect off of the top of the loop. And boom, we've got th three connection points for our nitrogen. Perfect again. Oxygen, well, it's a circle. We've got as many connection points as we really need. Uh, it stays the same as it really is, and it's excellent. It can connect off in any direction you like, so it's a very flexible one. In fact, it would be better maybe to be the C, but we'll leave it like that for now. So, P. Uh, this is the Descript P. What we're going to do is we're actually going to create this as the P. Now, you're not going to need to put all of that, so you could, if, if you're not using these two connection points, you would draw those short and then maybe draw it out, or draw a line like so. Regardless, you just got to draw a Descript P on it, and it changes that intersection from being a C to a, a P. And finally, the S, we will use the curve. We will allow it to curve either way. We'll allow it to rotate into any direction, become anything. So we're going to eliminate the I and the reverse T, for example, from the alphabet. And then the way that will connect is you could... you got one connection point on either side of it. You could also connect off of here and connect out of there. That gives you four connection points and plenty of room to work off of there if you like. So all of these have lots of connection points and they can be connected unambiguously. I'll show you how. So let's suppose that we just wanted to draw a benzene ring, something very simple. So we've got carbon, 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 carbon. Now we've, we can draw one C, for example, like so. Um, then we could draw another C just by adding a tick off of it. We could draw another C here by adding a tick off of it. So what we've got now is carbon, carbon, carbon. Now if we draw a line all the way across here, or sorry, let's start with up to there for now. If we draw a line there, we've added another carbon. So we've got carbon, 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 carbon. We add a line here, that's another carbon. If we were to connect it, they would be connected. So that would be the same as doing this. So we've got five carbons now. So this is basically a five point ring already. And then you would just add this to add another point. If you wanted to change that into C, 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 N, for example, well, first of all, let's, we can drop this, and that brings it down to 5, and now if we wanted to switch this to an N, we could do so. So that would give us another common ring we're going to be working with in our biochemistry. So as you can see, the rings become very simple shapes to deal with. Um, things become strings as opposed to long, strange shapes. Uh, let's have a quick look at something a little, like glycine, for example. This is a simple amino acid. This will be, give an excellent example. So, all amino acids start out with O, O, H, C, right? So, what that would be is C, O, O. Now, we'll assume, if you were looking at this, you wouldn't quite know whether there's a double bond or not. And the truth is, with this molecule, sometimes it's half shared, and sometimes there's a double bond on either, you could put it either side you like. When you want to draw a double bond, you would simply draw an extra line parallel there, or you could even connect the double, the double line up to the O, like so, so that it comes out like that and shows a double bond. But in, in most cases, we're just going to drop that information as well. So we will go like this, like this. We can connect it like that. As you can see, here we have our C, and then we have our O, and our O. And that is a great head to our amino acid. So when we'll leave the other information, we'll just assume that you know that at this point, these are either sharing or they're, they're an amino acid ending. Next, uh, the other end of an amino acid will simply be NHH, right? Well, 
N, and you just assume the double H's again. So what we've done is we've eliminated almost all of the useless information, and we can now draw this amino acid very quickly, like so. That is it. This is glycine. Oh, sorry, that is not glycine. Glycine actually has an extra C in it. I'm sorry. This is glycine. Or you can put the C dash on the other side, or however you like. 